Yeah, now we go to Kentucky a couple times a year, and we just completed a 3,300-mile road trip. Yeah. And uh, you literally got back a couple hours ago. Literally. <laughs> just called, just got back, and as I'm coming into Florida, it's like, hey, uh, you want to do this? And, you know, so this bottle was at the at the distillery. Just like, what, 20, 34, 36 hours ago? A couple or? days ago. Yeah. 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 That's yeah, awesome, we, man. So... Yeah, Colonel Leach, Taylor Small Batch. It was a fun trip. We uh we got to do a couple tours, got to explore the distillery, got to dive deeper into the history and got to see things that they didn't know existed until they discovered it. Yeah, what so what did they what did they say at that timeline? Is are we talking this this discovery's like this year discovery or so this month discovery? They they just finished a stage of their $1.2 billion expansion. Okay. And on our tour, they said they were cutting, uh, sl- they are cutting into some concrete for an elevator shaft and a piece of concrete fell through the floor and they're like, what happened? And when they went to inspect it, they realized it was the old fermenter tanks that Colonel Taylor had installed. So oh, these guys have been walking on top of this the whole time? Mm-hmm. They had no for idea. Year. Like, how long could they be walking on top of this? Uh, so this, I mean, you go, this goes back. Is it? This is not the OFC place, right? Is this the OFC location? This is. This is the OFC. Yeah. So this goes back in the 1800s, right? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. So these fermenter tanks that were covered up, um, what they did was they, they, they stripped them and they took the copper and mm-hmm. they sent it out to labs because... Colonel Taylor, he wanted everything pristine. Mm. He was the father of modern day bourbon and he wanted everything done properly. So it went through the fermenter tanks, which were lined with copper. It went through copper piping and until it was ready to go, it was barreled and then bottled. So when they discovered this through their expansion, they took this copper and they sent it to the labs and they found basically where it came from. So they contacted a mine in Germany to send them copper. And now they're working on an experimental batch of Taylor that ferments in copper that yep. in copper. And so right now it's an experimental batch took a couple pictures brought them back with me because you saw some barrels with that stamped right or yes or for uh yeah placarded the, the experimental so what they say i mean what's the word on that are we i mean i think i sell it in five i mean what's this here this is how old this is bottled and bond yeah so it's automatically four, four years plus, right? if not older so they okay so this is technically they don't go to they don't do a some they don't blow out a 10 on this small batch, right? It just depends. Really? It, de- it just depends on where they want their profile. Hmm. What are the, did they say anything like that at all these years making this E.H. Taylor and now they discover this, did they think that they were far off? Did they, did they mention that? Like they were, you're, you say this is delicious and you really enjoy it. But I mean, what was he drinking? Do you think he was, did they think he was drinking this or were they not really know. sure? I didn't ask, you know, it's uh they they're replicating everything they know mm. and you know to 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 look in you know this old area and just to say wow you know it came from here mm-hmm. so like i said they they pulled out the the copper they they sent it to the uh, had it analyzed and then contacted the mines in germany it's pretty much the same stuff and and then the water is the same or thinking they're the water is the same yeah it's it's pulled and what was cool during the tour um, i wouldn't say the same because now it's uh, reverse osmosis mm. uh it's still from the kentucky river mm. but when you look at their processing plant it's bigger it's double the size for the whole town and it's right on property so the uh the tour that we did the uh, old taylor tour it was really fun we got to do it with freddie so if you ever watch the documentary, Neat, mm-hmm. um, we got to see him through the whole tour, talk to him, ask him questions, and uh, 
<laughs> you know, when the, when the tour ends, you, uh, you go back upstairs and you have a tasting and, um, you know, he's telling you more stories and, mm. you know, it was just more things that we learned about him, you know, outside of watching a documentary. So did he do the, the, uh, the white dog and slap it? Did they do the, like, in the, in the, not, how they did no not white dog? this one. No, no. You drank aged bourbon. It was, mm-hmm. it was ready to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They had it all lined up. The, you know, the Buffalo trace, the, it depends on the day that you go. So if they have, you know, Weller that day, then you're going to be tasting Weller. Oh. If they have Eagle Rare that day, you're going to be tasting Eagle oh, Rare. Oh, okay. Um, you know, same thing with Colonel. And then it goes, you know, so you, they have the Wheatley Vodka, which they're doing really cool things with that too. Hmm. Um, and you got, is that where you got the the rare one? Mm-hmm. Is that the one? Yeah. Okay. Which yeah. it's still sitting up there. Is it? It is. We left it. Why? Because... Um, oh, you didn't get it? No, we, we got it. Oh, okay. we're, we're waiting on it uh, to be signed. We're going to mm. have the box signed uh, by Harlan Wheatley. And, uh, wow. So that's, a, that's a, I think, going to be another story in and of itself mm. just because it's so cool. And, um, you know, even though I'm a big bourbon, even though I'm a big bourbon drinker, um, never been a big vodka fan. Mm. But then when you drink Wheatley, it really has a good flavor profile. From the others, and now what they're doing uh, with clicks, you know, CLIX, so mm-hmm. Roman numeral, that's 159. It's distilled 159 times. And talking to some people there, they are on the verge of dropping another one out called Century. Hmm. So it's going to be distilled 100 times. So you have Wheatley, hmm. which is distilled 10 times and still tastes phenomenal. You have clicks on the upper end at 159. You're gonna have century right in the middle. So hopefully by next year, in the beginning of next year, they're gonna be pushing that out. And um, you're you know. drinking that neat? Huh? You're drinking neat, just ice or no? I haven't tried it yet. You haven't even had? No. Did but you yeah. have the ten year though, or did you have the simpler one? The uh, yeah the the we we have that. You have that's it. our house. Oh, okay. That's our house vodka. Gotcha. So when someone wants it, you know. Uh, when someone wants a vodka drink, you know, mixed okay. drink or, you know, bloody whatever. with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Our bloody Mary Sundays, we do it with that. Oh, okay. So it's just, uh, clean, very clean, very crisp. Not a headache. Eve no. vodka. Nice. No, that's cool. Not whatsoever. So, you know, it was on the way down, uh, coming back to Florida, you know, we went to Buffalo trace every day. So we did the trace tour and then we did the hard hat tour and the hard hat tour got us into, uh, the drying rooms because, you know, they go through hundreds of tons of, of corn mm-hmm. and grain. So when it gets done, it goes through the mash, it goes through the dryer. And we went through the drying rooms. And then we got to see these massive piles because when the semis roll in, they drop, they belly drop their corn mm-hmm. and it gets inspected and then it goes. And then the semis pull up. And they get loaded from above, and it's a dried grain from what was already distilled. And uh, it goes back to the cattle and stuff? It goes back to livestock, and it's food grade. Mm-hmm. So you could be, you know, consuming it in another product because mm-hmm. it is, you know, food grade material. And uh, it loses its sugar, so I believe it. Mm-hmm. It has nothing. Yeah. yeah. We tried it. I, you know, I, I dryer. Know, or? I know I tried it. No, um, just pick some up, put it in my mouth, and, yeah. you know, you still have that grain flavor yeah you know sweetness and gone a little bit you know i, I think it still had some hmm. to it you know it was just a couple specks of it that hmm. i put that it's uh very interesting you know nothing nothing goes to waste hmm. so you know and going down to pompeii as freddie called it you know going you know you walk through because their gift shop used to be you know a uh, a warehouse then it turned into a bottling facility and then it turned into, you know, the gift shop. Hmm. And then you go through these double doors and you, you come across these massive mash fermenters. You know, each one is 93,000 gallons and they have 12 of them, you know, six on one side, six on another. And they're dumping four of these a day. And is there, is there like a gear 
turn is there something turning inside there or no no nothing's turning no okay because we we saw one that was emptied and it just we we saw some sitting there and you could feel the temperature difference mm -hmm. you know because as they cook they get they get yeah aren't there i think there's coils in there and then doing things i believe there's coils so the uh i think it cooks by itself um because what you're talking about i think is the uh the still so as it comes up the still no like uh the detling uh fermenter it, uh, it's got coils in it mm. you can see inside yeah oh okay yeah, yeah we we looked inside these things and there was an intake valve and they just it maybe it's where he makes his mash it's got the coils I'm like i take it back that's our fermenter so the stage before that i think has things moving i believe that's not even that stage because that stage is just sitting still isn't it it's kind of just bubbling yeah so what ha it goes in and then it comes out and then it goes to the still and that's where it cooks okay so yeah. it takes and it that's where the coils the condensation you know alcohol versus water and it goes up and then they have a doubler and uh they have a beer tank so it separates and then doubler and then it gets filled are all of the brands let's try this yeah let me try While this we're sitting there talking about it absolutely getting thirsty this looks nice and dark and caramelly mm. it's real easy on the nose now, this is your first time having it yeah mm. absolutely it's easy on the nose mm-hmm So what do you think about the hundred proof? Yeah, I can tell it's, you know, past the nineties, but it's easy on the nose. I didn't know it was going to be that on the tongue. Hmm. Maybe I'm still getting alcohols coming off of this because I'm trying to pick up some of these notes on the nose and yeah, we just opened it what 20 minutes ago mm -hmm. and made a pour. What is the word on the, is there talk about the nose? No, they just go right into the taste. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they're saying taste of caramel, corn sweetness, mingled with butterscotch and licorice. The aftertaste is a soft mouth feel that turns into subtle spices of pepper and tobacco. There's a lot going on there. This is pretty much right on, too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you were saying you didn't know if there was licorice on there. I think I might notice that nic licorice, that that uh, stingy um, kind of numbing aspect of licorice, you know? Hmm. It feels cool. Hmm. It feels cool. Does yeah. it feel cool when you... When you take a sip, something mm -hmm. about just feeling cool. Yeah, because after your second sip, the uh, the pepperish kind of, you know, that tip pepperish, that feel that you first get on the very first one mm -hmm. kind of goes away. Yeah, see it. Has that nice chew. And a nice hug. It's a yeah. It's a and it it's in a it's a mature bourbon. Like um, I don't know if I would like this. If I would have liked this maybe a year ago, I'd probably want something even sweeter. Yeah. Do you have to fall in love with it? You have changed a lot in a year. Yeah. This I can under I can appreciate the aspects of this. Now, if I poured this for a brand newbie, I don't know if they'd like it a whole lot. They wouldn't appreciate it. Maybe think? some ice, maybe some water. You think? Might because I think they they expect a little more, a little more sweet. Mm. When you have that, now the bottle and bond aspect, you've had this for years. Does does this taste like what has it been consistent? You think? I think so. It's been consistent. Yeah. The small batch bottle and bond's been consistent. I believe so. Okay. Because yeah, you got to think these. Um, the small batch, so it's, you know, between two and 200 barrels. 
and it's uh, they they need to consistently hit that. And if they make something better, they need to take notes and strive for that. You know, and as we were walking past these giant fermenter tanks, when we entered the room, the master distiller was in there. So we got to talk to him for like 10 minutes. And that's exactly what he said. You know, they strive for the best. And if they make something better, then they're striving for that. Hmm. And it's <laughs> it's bourbon. You know, it's always changing. It's always... Yeah, the, um, the corn seasons and the different things that happen to the earth. and Well, and that's, uh, that's another cool thing. So... Um, you know, Buffalo Trace is now again family owned by Zazarak. And what they've done is they've acquired their 400 acres now. So they, they've reacquired the land around the distillery um, to bring that back. So it's, and these people, you know, they have contracts with farmers. So, you know, the corn comes from the same farm and they're going through a lot of corn a day i bet it was like when i think i asked it was 1.2 million pounds of corn a day did they say which one which gets the most corn it was no. those different you took photos of that family tree of the different mash bills right mm -hmm. we don't know which one has the most corn no i didn't ask and i'm pretty sure we could you know find the you know the breakdown mm -hmm. um but it's uh you know, it's in there. That's so, a lot of corn. Yeah. So you so you're you got up there, and did you guys just hang out downtown right away that first night, or did you did you hit a distillery as soon as you hit town? Let's see. So we got there. We as we go, we stop at liquor stores mm -hmm. just to see what we can find. If they have something that we want or that's special that we've never seen, mm -hmm. which we did pick up two bottles. Um, so we get into town, we check into our Airbnb, and then my wife had started the tours booked. And the cool thing about Buffalo is if you don't have a tour, when you get into the welcome shop or the check-in shop, you can ask them. And, uh, like the hard hat tour, we didn't have that booked and we asked them, Hey, can we book the hard hat tour? And they're like, Oh, we have availability at 1130. So we got in, got our bottles for the day left when got breakfast in downtown and then Lexington, which is five minutes. You know, So you left, you drove five minutes away, got breakfast and you have five minutes back. Yep. So that's pretty quick. Yeah, and it was a little cafe right in downtown Lexington. The breakfast was twenty bucks for for both of us. Mm. So um, we then we did the hard hat tour, which was you know pretty cool just to see. And we're, we're talking, you know, these. If you, uh, I'll show you these dryers. You know, click on uh, the pictures I brought back to you. So we got the fermenter tanks. That's ninety three thousand. They have twelve of those in one room, and that's the old. That's the old. That's the discovery, and that's, uh, this is discovery. Yep, that's uh, <clears throat> that's the tank, and that's what they're redoing right now. They're they're making that as an experimental. Uh, this is during the hard hat. Nope, this is that's that's, hard hat. Yep, that's Freddie there, and we're in uh, the we're, we're in the OFC warehouse, warehouse C, where uh, Colonel Taylor comes from, and uh, so yeah, right. he's it says Taylor. 1869 purchase of a small Lee's town distillery that he christened as OFC. So this is in Lee's town. No, it's at Frankfurt. Okay. Lee's town is probably the old castle. Okay. That's what he, he christened that OFC was his first foray into distilling. Yeah. He was a banker and then, he would see that there was money to be made in bourbon and then he started making bourbon mm. cuz he uh he's done quite a lot for for us if it wasn't for him as we discussed right i mean this is beyond just rumor this is fact if he hadn't done what he did we probably wouldn't have bottle and bond 
Correct. You know, and the bottle and bond was before the Food and Drug Administration, you know, pushing their, you know, the Food Act. Because he was a hard charger. I heard he he did not mess around. Yeah. I heard some things that wasn't the nicest to some people and did what he had to do, but he persevered and pushed through Mm -hmm. whether it was making friends or not. Yeah. But if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't have Bottle and Bond. No. You know, hopefully somebody else would have made it, but, you know, that's why he is, you know, the father of the modern day bourbon because of that. Yeah, he, he literally is there saying he's instrumental in fighting for the higher standards in the bourbon industry. Uh, so he pushed for the passage of the Bottle and Bond Act of 1897. And they say if his involvement in the bourbon industry wasn't enough, Taylor served as mayor of Frankfurt for 16 years. Mm-hmm. And that's where Buffalo Trace was located. Fra- Frankfurt? Frankfurt. Now, the OFC distillery was purchased by George T. Stagg mm-hmm. in 1879. So t- he only had it for 10 years. He yeah. had, so st- that Stagg building is what you think Castle and Key has now, or no? No. Oh. The, so I, from what the story was, he ran into some money problems. Taylor. Sold it to Stagg. Got his self rebuilt. So I believe he he started this building, fell into some times, mm. sold it to George, then built Castle and Key, which was you know which is now Castle and Key, got itself back together, and then he wanted to buy his distillery back, mm. and Stag's like no, never gave it back. Don't know that far in history. Now, you've been to the Castle and Key place, right? Yeah, we went there. So is that the oldest spot, though, if you've ever been at? That's really old, right? Well, I wouldn't say super old. What was cool about that is you could, the the trains, you could, the old railroad tracks are still there. And then when the coal when the trains would pull up with the coal, you could see the dumping area. They would dump it down into a pit, and then that pit would be directly across from the boilers. So that, you know, where you see the old castle, that's the power station for their distillery. Wow. So it just walked through there, looked at the grounds. Grounds are beautiful. I'd you love know, to go there. Looked into some old stacks and I'm like, hey, you know, what was this? Oh, one's for the ash. And, you know, so they would take it and they put it in there and just move it through. And it's just, you know, the history that's, oh, yeah, that's so know, cool. there and waiting to be discovered. Did you, did you sample? I know it wasn't on this trip, but I don't mean to jump around, but you've, did you sample any Castle and Key on site? No, never not have, on site. Never no, have, have you? No. We, we have um, the first batch. Yeah, the um, one from Neat that talked about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we have the first batch from from the distiller that was from the master distiller that was there, and she's off now. Yeah, she's off, and uh, they had batch two and three there, hmm. and uh, we just you know that that trip there was just to see it, mm-hmm. so we didn't have enough time to mm. go do the tastings and um, go into that, but it was uh, to look. Yeah. And, you know, to look at the old... You can feel it, right? The spring and, you know, the river, the dam still there, the water control structure to <laughs> control the flow. So the That's distillery cool. is still producing. It, you know, it ties into it. So back to this, you are in town, airbnb you've hit, you found, I think, a barrel pick, right? That was where you found that barrel pick? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you got this, you scored a barrel pick that was unique. You guys liked it. You got that. Is that, uh, that's just the beginning of the collection that started here in the last week, right? So you, your first, your first evening in the Airbnb, where did you guys go? Did you guys go to that, that awesome place where you get oldies and it's the big, huge bourbon collection you've always told me about, or did you do something new? 
No, we uh, we just got there and relaxed because we just oh, yeah? you know we just got done traveling. Um, we need to get up in the morning and be at Buffalo before they open. Okay, to get in the line. The first day there was uh, Blanton's, I believe. So the line was a few rows deep. <laughs> Did and you get something? Yeah. Yeah. yeah we you got we, something. We got there. Um, and then that, the first day is when we had our tour with Freddie. So you did a tour on the Blanton's day? Mm-hmm. And then you sampled at the bar, Blanton's? And then we, yep. Uh, so at the bar was Blanton's, and the next day was Taylor. Wow. So did Freddie pour the Blanton's for you guys? No, it was already pre-poured. Okay. When we get to the room, it's already pre-poured. They know exactly how oh, many okay. people are going in the tour. Yeah. That's so. my experience, too. Nobody's ever pouring it for me. It's already there. Yeah, yeah it's there. Yeah. So. It's, um, you know, the, the tour itself was cool because, you know, when he says, oh, I'm going to take you down to Pompeii, it's like, oh, what are you talking about? And for them to discover that, you know, the old fermenter tanks, <clears throat> you know, they, they have, what, 12 of these new tanks, 12 tanks behind that, so 24 and then they just discovered these old other tanks. So they discovered this, and they throw that that safety great walkways up real quick, so they can get around. Is that what that was? I didn't ask. You Is know, that, they that looks, uh, as they, part they, as the tour because it was they safety safety ties that whole thing pretty quick in order to show it right. Well, they've been they've been in the, underneath this expansion for a few years. Okay. So we're you know we're talking about one point two billion dollars oh, to macro. to push into it, and uh, it was a cool experience. You know, just to, number one to be with Freddie, yeah, and you know talk to him and listen to his story. Um, be, you know, because he tells your he tells a story on neat, but what he doesn't tell you is if he didn't t- come home to take care of his father, hmm. his father saved his life because on nine eleven two thousand one, his train would be arriving underneath the twin towers at 904 when the tower collapsed so if he had not come back home he would be there so damn and that's uh <laughs> we're sitting there and that's why he's so that's why the guy's he's so happy and he just yeah. he enjoys life you can tell he enjoys it yeah, every and day. He's he's highly motivated. You know, he was he was introduced into the Bourbon Hall of Fame. He is the first tour guide to be in the Bourbon Hall of Fame. Is that the day that they had everybody that was of importance signed the barrel head? I don't know. Remember there was a recent thing where he signed a barrel. Oh, maybe that was the, what that ten thousand hundred thousandth barrel. Nine millionth. Nine millionth. They signed a barrel head. Yeah. Wow. Man. And they're continuing to make strides because you got to think they're trying to envision 20, 30 years from now mm. already. So to be able to, you know, be a part of that and taste what it is today, hopefully in 30 years, we can see what they have for right. the future because they're doing a lot now with malt, you know, and that's coming out. Did they mention single malting things? They, that's hot. That's coming up. They did not. No, just a. Jack know. Daniels just did a single malt. I saw that release. No. Yeah, not going to be easy to get. Mm-mm, no. So as uh, I sip this E. H. Taylor single small batch uh, burlet bottle and bond, it's it's coming out like I'm. My palate's adjusting to it. It's picking out more of the caramel now. Mm-hmm. And I really wish we had read something about the nose because. The nose has the caramel. See, actually, I'm getting I get more when I do a uh, an open mouth mm. uh, pull instead of the the nostril only. It's pleasurable. It is. I really would love to have someone brand new sip this and see what they think they'd appreciate it or not. Mm. I like it. So you're up there. You did your first tour. You got Bland's. That is by luck of the draw, kind of, right? Yeah. You don't know what it That's is. That's luck of the draw. You pull up there and, you you're, know. you like. Did you guys look at each other like, oh, crap. We have a Bland's day. 
we were happy. Yeah. You know, because, <laughs> um, you know, you don't know what you're going to get. You know, there's a lot of sites that speculate and, you know, um, there's a Facebook group that likes to try to guess because of, oh, they the, try to quantify or do some algorithmic thing of mm-hmm. when it's going to be a Bland's day or whatever. Yeah. That's cool. And they, uh, they, <laughs> so right around, hopefully around around eight thirty. AM in the morning. Yeah. In the, in the morning they update their website so you can see what's in stock and, um, you know, so you get there because they might double it up on our last day there Friday. It was another Blanton's day. So, hmm. um, we love Mictors. So we, we went to Mictors where we got a reservation, um, after the, uh, the equipment expo that we go up there for, mm-hmm. Um, we're sitting up there having a drink and these, uh, this group of people come by and, uh, they sit down at the bar with us and, you know, we start talking to them and the guy's like, Oh, I love, you know, plantains. <laughs> and it's like, well, we've been here. They had it on Monday and they're like, Oh, well, you know, do you think they're going to have it tomorrow? And it's like, don't know. You know, don't know. We're hoping they have Eagle rare. That way we can just make the entire collection and get the Eagle rare. And, uh, you know, we, we finish up. I had a lovely flight of the bourbon and then a flight of rye and just all delicious. Mm. And uh, we leave. We know we tell them goodbye. Next morning, Friday morning, we are at uh, Buffalo Trace to see what they have. And it's a blends. So they had blends on Monday and they had blends on Friday. They completely skipped Eagle Rare. Oh damn! And it's like, did you do, right, get, cool. do you get more? No, because you're in Buffalo. <laughs> you're in Buffalo jail for ninety days. Oh, so dang. it's you know one bottle per person every ninety days. Oh man! You enter the get you you enter the shop. They give you your ID. You give them ID, and oh, they put a wristband on you. Man. And when you buy it, they scan it. So it's like, all right, well, we need to talk to you know the gift shop anyway to see if our clicks is available. And, uh, it wasn't available, mm. uh, but we still got some other things, you know, some Buffalo cream. Wasn't a wasted trip. Some root beer. Oh, um, you got some of the cream? Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, the cream and the root beer. Because mm. if you mix the two together, it's a, it's a, it's a lovely root beer float. Oh, wow. And, uh, then, so if you put some ice cream on it, it makes it oh, even better. Oh, wow, wow. But what I didn't realize is you could whip the cream. It's whippable. Whip it? Yeah. So blend, you, if you're. Blend whip? Yeah, so if you're making French toast, you want whipped cream on top of your French toast. It's got enough fats in it still. Yeah. Wow. You can, A, marinate your toast in the cream, and then, B, whip the cream. Oh, so man. So that knowledge just unlocked my inner fat kid. Yeah, you're like, I got ideas. Yes, I was so happy when I figured that out. Or when she told me that, it was, ho, oh, ho. Oh. Hey, you better, so. update, you better update your website the morning you're going to do that so I can be there on time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, so it's, uh, you know, it's, it's just, you know, they're everybody at Buffalo Trace is so personable, you know, because they, they enjoy their job and, you know, talking with, you know, uh, Freddie who did our first tour and David who did our second tour. And there's like four or five Davids. So, mm. um, no one is ever laid off. So in mm. a bad economy, mm. Everyone develops a, a, another skill. Hmm. So all the landscaping, it's done by Buffalo Trace employees. Hmm. All the artwork, Buffalo Trace employees. The gift shop, um, well, the they have a, a building behind the gift shop. It is uh, the employee center now. Hmm. So they built that back in the day. Hmm. And the we actually went into uh, Colonel Taylor's old house, which is... Um, has horsehair plaster on the wall. You could feel the horsehair. And, uh, you know, he died in the house. It's to be said to be looking at at his birds. Um, but they had like a paranormal tour. Really? And uh, they're like, oh, well, is this, you know, because back in the day, you know, your people lived in, in the bottom and you lived up top. And so they had like a paranormal tour and really they think there's some paranormal stuff going on. Yeah. And really? There's, they said that there's a couple people that when they do the tour, they come to the house and they feel like some kind of change and they're like, Oh, oh no, man. Nope. Not going in this house. You know, that's right, possible. So it's, uh, 
to something else for somebody to look into if they're into that sort of thing. You know, look into whoever did that tour to, to see what's going on with that. But it was really cool mm. to walk into his house where he oversaw the distillery to be able to see the architecture and, you know, what went into making his house. Like, hey, go feel the wall. Nope, oh, that's horse hair. Hmm. You know, to help everything hold together. You know, before before fiberglass. That's what they did. Yeah. Really? So it was it was really enjoyable. So you, know. you did a lot of Buffalo Trace up there. Every day. So you got Blanton's, Taylor. What else? What was your other scores? The Blanton's, Taylor. We didn't get Eagle. Didn't get Eagle. Did not. Um, and Weller. Okay, so you got three. Mm-hmm. Three that you like, I mean. Yeah, three of the four. And then the Blanton's. Was there something uh, unique? Did you get a unique one? Did you score like something that's, you know... You get it. Yeah. Did you get sort of the run of the mill? No, it's all the same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because the <clears> other <throat> labels and stuff, the gold label, the red label. Yeah. I see these different crazy labels. Yeah. There. They get shipped off or. Yeah. They don't. I do have, we, my wife and I, we do have two gold labels. Oh, do you? So. What's we, the word on those? Are they like amazing don't know. or something? We or? just acquired them. So. What's, what, what's, the, what's the internet say? Is it to die for or something? No, you look on the internet, everybody's, you know, blowing everything up. Oh, okay. So, gotcha. You know, it's. We haven't we haven't tried it yet. We have two of them. Mm. So uh, when we do open it, um, I have a couple people in mind to invite over to try it because you know that's the that's the joy of going to do this is you know we have stuff that people haven't tried, people haven't seen, and it's like you know hey let's have a bourbon night. You know I'll break out this. So on a bourbon night we'll break out the gold label blends and you know we'll say hey bring whatever bottle you want bring something that you think someone else hasn't tried and we'll just sit there on the back porch and you know maybe throw some pizzas in the pizza oven and you know drink bourbon talk about it you know and and see you know you may like it you may not like it Mm -hmm. and it's you know it's it's okay nothing wrong with it that's okay you know it's it's the camaraderie and to build, you know, just to be a part of bourbon history to say, hey, yep, I got to try this. I loved it. You know, I got to try that. Didn't like it. So it's the, you know, to say, huh, go look at my shelves and be like, eh, let's get this out tonight. You know, just to. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. It's it, like the encyclopedia of, uh, of our history, man, our, our bourbon history. Yeah, your collection. It's, uh, and I appreciate you bringing the stories to us, man, because not everybody's been up there, you know, as Floridians, we don't all get to go up and we're locked in. And as you know, I haven't had this because quite frankly, it's, you can see, I mean, we have the total wine page up and out, out, out. I mean, probably never going to have it. Oh yeah. To find it here. Um, if you can't, if you can't find it at retail, the the second hand market just blows it out. It doubles, triples the price. Yeah, because it's supposed to be it's supposed to be forty eight, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's right around to, in there. It's supposed to be forty eight. Yeah. And you're not gonna find that. No, you know, it's like when we go through Kentucky, we stop and we look at other, you know, distributors, you know, liquor stores, uh, and we pull up the one. The Weller Red, the Weller, you know, twelve year, you know, uh, your, you know, your own perfect bourbon, the BYOP, you know, or BYOB, um, you know, those labels. Uh, they had the, the um, Elmer T. Glee. Mm. I'm like, hey, how much? He's like, oh, two ninety nine, three ninety nine, <laughs> four ninety nine, five ninety nine. It's like, Jeez. that's a fifty dollar bottle that you want, yeah, four hundred bucks for, and you know which you know i have a bottle at the house it's open you know number t is like number t yeah, yeah what did we find it for when i when i found it, it was 299 right yeah i think it was is it is nuts yeah and you know it's all part of buffalo trace you know their label and it's good 
you know, it's a good $50 bottle of bourbon. Yeah. And for people, you know, on the second hand, it's like when you go out to the store and you find, you know, the, the Blantons for one ninety nine. It's mm. like, no, no, mm. no, good 60, 65, 68, yeah. depending on, you know, because when you go, and a lot of people don't understand this either, when you go to a distillery, it has, it's got to go through the distributor. Yeah, it comes back, right? Before it comes back to the warehouse. Yeah, it's Before crazy. it comes back to the gift, the gift shop. So you're not paying that secondhand mark, but you're paying retail and, you know, the cost, the taxes. So, you're, you know, the taxes are different in Kentucky, you know, versus here. Mm-hmm. So you're going to be paying that. Mm-hmm. But it's, for us, we go once a year, twice a year if we can, just to see what we can get. Because each year, it's a different experience. You know, because we did a discovery tour a few years back at Buffalo Trace. And then this year was special. It, we walk in and we get a wristband and like, hey, do you have a tour? And I'm like, yeah, we actually do. And I'm like, hey, is Freddie here today? And she's like, he's your tour guide. Mm. <laughs> mm. My wife and I were both mm. very happy. Because, you know, each time we go there, mm. hey, is Freddie here? Ah, oh, he's on vacation. Mm. No, hey, is Freddie here? Oh, he's on another tour. Mm. You know, just to be able to see him, say Dude. hi, take a picture with him. You got it. You know. That's awesome. So we were very, very happy with the whole experience. Well, I, I can tell, like, on this, because this is your second this year, right? Or was it, th- is this your third this year or the second this year up there? Second. Second. So the second one this year. And I just get like this vibe, like this one just hit a bunch of check. You were, you were able to check a bunch of stuff off that mm-hmm. you hadn't before. And you've done a ton up there already. Yeah. But something just like fell into place, mm-hmm. right? That's why the truck came back full, you know, a bunch of hits. Like you had, a, you scored a bunch of good stuff. You found a bunch of good stuff. Like I think this was like your best trip. I feel like this was a really good trip. Oh, and it was so. your birthday trip. It was. It was your birthday trip. It so was. it means a lot. It's yeah, special. It was. And, and so it's extra special. It was. And what made it, you know, what made it really kick ass was we're sitting there at, you know, Mictors enjoying a flight, you know, the first flight of bourbon. Um, and my wife orders her a drink and she the bartender walks up. She's like, hey, It's your birthday, right? I'm like, Yeah, it is. Who call happy birthday? So I order my second flight of rye. And mm. um, their toasted rye mm. is amazing. Mm. So their 10-year rye is phenomenal. Their toasted rye, I love. So we finished that. And it's like, all right, let's go and check out. And the bartender brings our tab. And it's like, hey, we picked up your first flight. What? So 35 bucks. Damn. They picked it up. And, um, you know, uh, Friday before we left, uh, we went to Mictors. Uh, we went to Jim Beam and Mictors, you know, so we picked you up. The bookers, uh, your, your bookers Thanks, over bro. there. Yeah, the bookers. and uh, we get to Victor's, and there we were able to bottle uh, the barrel proof Victor's. And I, the la- the first time I've ever had it was in that flight. And I asked him, I'm like, "Hey, did you guys just add this to your flight?" And like, that's been here for a little bit. And I'm like, "I've never seen this." And so they're like, "Oh, it only comes we it only gets distributed in Kentucky." And whether that's true or not, because some people rumored to pick it up further out west. Hmm. But we got there on Friday, and we were actually able to bottle our own barrel proof in the back. And uh, did you do it with a, Did you do it with a thief, or did you do it with the the, the pull lever? You did the pull lever. Yeah. So they so, prep. They prepare it for you. It's there. <clears throat> it was actually we had to wait because it was we were the first ones to pull from that barrel. Nice. So we had to wait for the barrel to get swapped out. Oh, that's cool. And, um, we had, when we go back there, they had a nice book set up and I'll, I'll show you, uh, some pictures once when we do, cause I want to do a mixture for you one day. Um, but they had a nice book set out and because you have to write your, your name and the, mm. the, the barrel and the, the label number and all that stuff into mm. the book. And so we're writing out the labels and she's like, oh, today's date is... I'm like, it's my birthday. And she's like, oh, it's your birthday. And you didn't even use that line on us? And I'm like, no, no, we just asked if, you know. And uh, so it was an enjoyable experience to be able to yeah, man, go there. And because I, I really enjoyed the night before. Um, 
to be able to sit down and, you know, in, in the barrel, the barrel proof. And I'm like, where can I get this? I'm like, well, if you come, they actually, if you come in the morning, they can sign you up to go and do your own draw. So you were, you discovered this while having a flight? Yeah. Really? I asked the, I asked the her, light bulb goes off during your flight. It's like, I love this. Oh my God. Where can I get it? And she's like, yeah, you know, it's 170 bucks for the bottle. But if you come, you get to do this experience mm. downstairs. So got got there, signed up for it, got it done before you left. And uh, mm. hopefully hopefully my wife can pull off uh, an amazing tour there that happens next year. So And get more of the No, the founders tour. There's something going on special? No, they do it once a month. Oh. And it's really hard to get into it. So, um, there's keep pecking at it and trying to, yeah, hopefully mm. these next year, um, when, when we go, it's, uh, hopefully they number one, do it during that period that we go since it is once a, once a month, but it was just the overall experience for, you know, we put, you know, 3,300 miles, mm -hmm. you know, leaving here, going, coming back 3,300 miles. And <laughs> like I said, this thing literally came out of the bag, got home, unpacked, went and got the dogs, brought them home, put this in the car, back in the car, because we unpacked <laughs> everything, put it back in the car, and, you know, changed my shirt, and then came here. So it's like, hey, what'd you do? Well, I drove 3,300 miles and drinking bourbon with Lee. So. Man, yeah, there's no closer um, experience to that than, than what you did. I really appreciate it, dude. Can you uh, pour me a little more? I'm going to try this with some of this uh, some of this water. I got mountain water, not my typical um, uh, zero. Mm. I, tr I poured some of the uh, liquid death water. I think it's liquid death. Mm -hmm. I love that packaging. Yeah, so I got the liquid death straight OG water here. It's liquid death, right? Hmm? Yeah, liquid death. Yeah. See, it's still the mountain water somehow bubbles. Mm. <laughs> so it's that fresh. Uh huh. <laughs> Probably got some uh, trout, you know, remnants yeah. oh, in it wow. or something. You know what it is? I didn't even look at it. You sat that down and. I didn't even look at that. And, you know, yeah. just for... Uh, you want to try it? Yeah, just to see. liquid death? Yeah, I'll throw a couple drops in there. Just to see if it changes any of the of the profile of it. I think it cools it down a little on the nose. Yeah. It was never really... It was never hot. It was never really a wreck on my nose in the no. first place. But, caveat... I couldn't really grasp a bunch of notes on the nose initially. Right. Um, and I, But it didn't burn. So it was like, it's almost, it was stealthing the yeah. scent of, what do you think? I mean, I don't, I'm going to probably do even more. I think I'm going to do a little more water just to, because right now it really didn't bring it down a whole lot. I like her legs. They just hold. Oh yeah, I didn't even pay. Wow, <laughs> man, look at those runners, man. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> so they're not doing any ridiculous filtering. This is just no. Put it out. I don't think there is there any statement of filtering on the no because there's a lot going on in that bottle. Yeah, there's a lot of label, a lot of detail. I like that. I like you can read things. That the transparency is amazing. I think you got a lot going on. You seen one of those? What was it? Tornado Survivor bottles. Yeah. Once you yeah. saw that. So if you're ever at, but if you're ever at Buffalo Trace and you look at the corner, you know, next to the gift shop, and you look down the wall, um, you can tell the difference in the brick. Oh, and, repair. Yeah, from getting a repair. Because, oh, really? You know, tornado came through, tore the roof off, damaged some brick, and those barrels in the very top were left out, exposed to the sun, left out to the elements. And, um, I'm not sure if they're still trying to recreate that, uh, profile, but during one of the tastings a few years ago, they're like, Oh, if you find 
this tornado survivor for less than thirteen or fifteen thousand bucks. Holy smokes! Um, it's a deal. <laughs> and I looked at my wife because, like the day before, I had went out, um, and I think it was like maybe eighty five hundred bucks. And my wife's like, "You're not getting it." I'm like, "I'm not paying eighty five hundred bucks for a bottle of bourbon." Uh-uh. But going back to like the blue note, you know, be, yep. being exposed, um, you know. For to say, hey, yep, I found one, and it's still sitting on the shelf mm-hmm. because it's sitting on a shelf. It's just like the other ones where, you know, two ninety nine, three ninety nine, four ninety nine for these secondhand rates. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, I I hope, you know, cause you know, as we you know as we came of age and we'd go to a liquor store and they're like, oh, we got Pappy on the uh, on the shelf for one hundred twenty bucks. Oh, I'm not paying 120 bucks for Pappy. Oh my God, I know. You know, and to to be able to to sit down and drink a bottle of Elijah 18 with a, a friend for 45 bucks, mm-hmm. you know, and to be able to go back the next day and get a bottle of this or a bottle of that, it it seemed to be never ending, unreal. And then you know the millennial bourbon boom just skyrocketed, and it's like. Where'd my bourbon go? Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, where did, you know, you know, Elijah pulled their age statements off unless it's, hmm. you know, Heaven Hill, unless, unless it's 18 or, you know, 23, hmm. you know, so they pulled their age statements off of everything else. But that was another very cool tour. I know I sent you a couple pictures mm-hmm. of that um, to be able to walk through Heaven Hill. Um, since it was my birthday, they gave me the key to unlock the... Uh, <laughs> The unlock the Rick house. Oh yeah, and I'm like, hey, uh, can I keep this just to uh, you know? Don't check your check your cameras tonight, mm-hmm. you know. And they're, these are telling the tale of you know the uh, old Fitzgerald of how he would come in and you know thief it because he was a you know <laughs> he was a bond agent, so that's why they you know OFG you know the thief he would come in, you know he had a key, huh. and it would take two keys to open the Rick. And somehow he acquired the second key. So, you know, the old thief, he would come in and, you know, and allegedly, you know, uh, take some bourbon for himself. Yeah. But hard to resist. Yeah. Especially, you know, Heaven Hill. That good. Yeah. So, you know, that tour was really cool. And uh, they didn't let me keep the key. Was it like a skeleton key? Yeah, it was. Yeah. And like, oh, well, you know, that's just a uh, ornamental key i'm like I, if it gets me in it gets me uh-huh in. <laughs> so it was that tour was really cool just to be able to see you know in there and um to to be able to see you know this you know the massive warehouses that the rick houses that keep you know some have two plum bobs some have four plum bobs you know just to or you know or more just to keep make sure the building's still true wow Really, you know, the building. Yeah. Make sure it hasn't shifted or done anything stupid. Wow. So, and then, you know, like the brick warehouses where you have, you know, at Buffalo Trace, every every six feet you have the King's Row because those were designed to, when they collapsed, to fall in and actually hug mm. the barrels. So, hopefully, if they did collapse, well, I should say, and uneventfully, if they collapsed, they would you know, protect the barrels hmm. because, you know, fire is a bear, very big thing. Mm-hmm. You know, when Heaven Hill um, had their fire, they lost their bottling line. They, they lost their, um, they lost their still. And uh, so, you know, bourbon being bourbon, you know, they had a lot of other people come in and, you know, produce their things. And uh, so. Now you, have more in the we have another show we'll probably do did you do the uh you did heaven hill right this mm-hmm. this ryan so we'll have something more to talk about mm-hmm. on another show with that yeah yeah good <clears throat> we'll hold that off so yeah heaven hill mictor jim beam yeah we'll hold that off yeah but yeah. it's all it's all just it all comes back to a circle right on so Man, this is really good. I appreciate this. This is uh I know Eric likes the uh the EH. I forgot he scored his when he was on his 
Yeah, he, he was there. Trail. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, uh, he met your, us up there. That's right. So you saw him get the EH day. Yeah, we were there. Gotcha. And uh, you know, he met us up there uh, last year, and we had a good time. It was a good, good experience. Um, Did he buy? Is this is what he has right here? Mm-hmm. Small batch uh, yeah. BIB. Yeah. Gotcha. So Gene, what'd you think about everything? No, oh, speechless. I know it was a great he, show. He's dedicated. He's willing to work uh, silently. Mm-hmm. Good helper, good intern. Yeah, very good intern. Yeah, positive thinker, <laughs> problem solver. Yeah, he contributes <laughs> a lot. <laughs> so, no, I'm glad uh, you know you were able to do this on such short notice. It's like yeah, likewise I'm just sitting there thinking, man, you know, driving back, you know, had a few hours left. I'm like, hmm, would be a better way to end this trip with, you know, oh, this is a, this is a, no immediate see. Then uh, this is awesome. I really appreciate it, man. I didn't expect you to, you know, wanting to do all this after getting the dogs and unpacking mm-hmm. this stuff, but I really appreciate it, man. Thanks for, you know, keeping it going, the momentum. Yeah. So I'll see you on the next round. Absolutely, bro. Hopefully Gene can join us. Yeah. He doesn't say much. I don't think he's going to go anywhere. No. no. I like him. He doesn't say much. <laughs> so cheers, buddy. Cheers, bro. Thank you. You're welcome.